Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready for the event. KXTV, this is Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Endeavor ISS, this is KXTV TV. How do you hear me? Uh, ISS and Endeavor have you loud and clear. Good to hear. Well, greetings from Sacramento, California. We feel a personal uh, connection to Steve Robinson, who's from Sacramento. So, Steve, I'd like to begin with you and hear your thoughts on the shuttle program ending this year, but still leaving behind a remarkable legacy in the space station and the Hubble telescope. Uh, is this mission a little bittersweet for you? Well, hello, Sacramento, my hometown, and, and uh, I'd like you to meet uh, all my uh, good crewmates and friends here from the Shuttle Endeavor and the Space Station, International Space Station. Um, thanks for visiting us. And uh, I couldn't have said it any better myself. This wonderful legacy of the uh, shuttle program is this unbelievable space station. When we uh, approached it yesterday from, uh, from below, to look up and see what humankind could really accomplish in space was just almost impossible to believe. It seemed like science fiction. And, and now here we are with uh, human beings that are living on board. And uh, that truly is a, the amazing le legacy of the space shuttle program. Steve, this will be a decade when more humans, even civilians, get to experience space flight. Do you find looking down on Earth from space to be life-changing? Yeah, I think it, it really does broaden your view of, of humans' place in the universe. And, and uh, I guess when you're in space looking down on the Earth, you feel more like, uh, you know, a citizen of the planet, even more than your own patriotic feelings, which are also very strong. But uh, I think the more people that get to experience that, the better this world's going to be. After the shuttles are retired later this year, it's possible that the next astronauts launched from American soil to the space station will be on a spacecraft built by a private company developed with the help of NASA. Are we on the brink of a new era in spaceflight, a new role for NASA, but also one that might see even greater resources put towards space exploration? Well, the nature of spaceflight is that every era is a new era, groundbreaking, pioneering, and trailblazing. It's things, uh, we're in the business of doing things that haven't been done before. So going on from the shuttle to another kind of uh, vehicle, and in the meantime, using the Russian Soyuz vehicles uh, is, is definitely our destiny, and I think everybody's excited to see what's going to come next. Steve, there is some shock and disappointment over the cancellation of NASA's plans to go back to the moon in this decade. Your reaction to that, and do you think space exploration will remain a key part of America's greatness and continue to inspire, just as it has for the past 50 years? I think the American public have have uh, counted on a, a human space program for more than 50 years now. It's part of the national identity. And uh, so I think it's going to continue. Um, I, to me, it's not a matter of uh, exactly which year we go back to the moon and establish a moon base. I think it's going to happen. I can't say when. I can't say who's, uh, who's primarily going to be uh, responsible. I presume it'll be an international effort because it's uh, one planet reaching the moon. And uh, I, I just don't see any way that uh, the exploration of space will really slow down because that's the human spirit. A question for Jeff or TJ. The president's budget extends the U.S. commitment to the space station to 2020 or beyond. What is the benefit to science and mankind, really, in knowing that the orbiting space lab is going to be there for at least the next decade? Well, the station was always uh, intended to be a unique orbiting laboratory uh, to do science and research uh, in many areas across the spectrum of, of possibilities uh, to include uh, supporting future exploration. 
and it's taken us uh, until now to complete the assembly. And we're, you know, we're, after this mission, will be essentially complete with the major assembly of the space station. And naturally, when you get done building a project, you want to you want to utilize it. So it's important uh, to uh, extract the utilization potential out of the station, and extending it out to 2020 gives us the opportunity to do that. A question for Commander Zamka. You are delivering and putting in place the last major additions to the space station. Uh, some hard work ahead for you on this mission, but do you think at the end maybe a sense of uh, a job well done by, by all of the shuttle crews that have helped to build the space station? Oh, I think so. This is uh, one of many assembly missions that have come up here with uh, a lot of uh, players that have helped assemble it. Uh, we got some news yesterday that after we docked to the space station, the stack, meaning the mass that we brought up, uh, added to the space station uh, was over one million pounds. So we've got quite a substantial uh, construction effort up here. And uh, it, it is a, a marvel to the, the teamwork between the different partners and all the astronauts and cosmonauts from the different nations involved to get to this level. Well, thank you for your time tonight. We know you're all incredibly well uh, trained. We just wish you the, the best of luck on this mission, and uh, we're there in spirit with you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Great questions. So long, Sacramento. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the KXTV TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WKRG TV. Endeavor ISS, this is WKRG-TV. How do you hear me? WKRG-TV, we have you loud and clear. Great. My first question is for Kay Hire, the Mobile native. We want to know what kind of personal items you've taken with you and if you have any moon pies or Mardi Gras beads up there. Good question. Hello, Mobile. Uh, haven't really had a chance to uh, see Alabama or Mobile on this mission so far. We've been very busy, and when we've been passing over, it's been dark, so I haven't gotten a good look this time, but I'll certainly be looking for a chance to uh, take a peek from up above. Um, certainly, uh, we'll be spending Mardi Gras on orbit this year, so I think we're going to have to bypass the celebrations and we'll, no uh, well, <laughs> we'll just uh, have to catch up on that next year. But uh, we actually don't bring that many personal items into space. Uh, we're very space limited and weight limited, and uh, we we share a lot of items as well. So uh, very few uh, personal items and. Um, no Mardi Gras beads, but I might have to take a look and see if there might be any special moon pies. <laughs> okay. How were you so lucky to be able to be one of the last astronauts to get on before the shuttle program ends? I really don't know. Um, why I was so fortunate, but I, I will tell you that I, I feel very blessed and very fortunate uh, to be a part of NASA, a part of this international effort, and especially a part of the Endeavor crew for STS-130, and to be joining the expedition crew here on the International Space Station. I just can't even describe how, how wonderful it is, how all of these different people work together to make all of this happen and make it all so successful. I'm very, very honored and uh, very fortunate. What is it like at the space station, and what room are you specifically in now, and what goes on in there? Well, I think I'd like to uh, turn this one over to uh, TJ and let him answer. <clears throat> well, right now we, we are hovering, floating in the, what's called Node 2, and it's uh, at the front portion of the space station. What goes on in Node 2 mostly is, um, uh, well, public relation events, as you see us doing now. But also it ends up being a little bit of a, a, little bit of a storage place where we end up logistically prepositioning things to switch out with the shuttle items. And uh, Commander Jeff and I have our sleep quarters in this area. 
Okay, we, we asked about some of the personal items. What do you do for fun while you're up there? Well, since, since, I, since I've had the mic, I'll, I'll at least start off with this. Um, as you can well say, you know, our days are very busy, so it's it's a race to try to get ahead of the schedule to be able to build in some time to do some of the fun things that we end up um, enjoying a lot. But probably on the top of the list is being able to look out the windows and take pictures of, of a gorgeous view that we have of the Earth, which is one of the reasons why I think it's very important, and we're so excited to have the shuttle crew here with us, as they're bringing up the window of all windows for the space station, and we can't wait to be able to uh, take a gander through that. I, I think we're, we still have you. So I, my next question is, um, since the shuttle program is coming to an end, what kind of things would you tell young children who really want to do something like space exploration? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and repeat my question one more time. What type of advice would you give children who dream of being involved in space exploration? Hello, it's Terry Verts here. Um, I would say to work hard in school and to find the things that, you good, that you're good at and that you love. And if you find those things and you work hard at them and you study at them, um, you're going to be successful no matter what it is in life. And so I think it's really important uh, just to be motivated to, uh, to find your passion, find your dream, and find your calling, and uh, work hard at that in school. Okay, my last question is for Kay once again. Do you have any fond memories you can share from Murphy High School and Ms. Frances Sibley from Murphy wants you to call her when you get back to Earth? Wow, uh, thanks so much to the folks at Murphy High School uh, for remembering. And uh, wow, it was just a, a wonderful experience I, I had as a student at Murphy High School. And I, I would encourage the, all the students of Murphy High School to follow Terry Vertz's advice, as he just told you, to you know work hard in school because you just you never know what opportunities are going to become available to you later on. So you want to have that good solid background so that when these fantastic opportunities open up, uh, who knows, maybe they'll be in space for people that they can take advantage of those opportunities. Okay, thank you so much for all of you joining us, and good luck on the rest of your mission. Thanks so much, and so long from the International Space Station and Space Shuttle Endeavor. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WKRG TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KMOX Radio. Endeavor ISS, this is KMOX Radio. How do you hear me? KMOX, uh, MOX Radio, we have you loud and clear. Excellent endeavor. Thank you all for your time with us tonight. And I want to start with Mission Specialist Bob Benkin, who has a uh, connection to our KMOX listening audience in St. Louis, being a hometown guy. And Bob, talk about how special it was for you to be in the cockpit during that uh, last night launch of the shuttle. Well, first of all, I'd like to just uh, say hello to everyone back in St. Louis and particularly all my family and friends that are, are still there. Uh, um, as a, far as night launches go, this was my second night launch, um, and so it was pretty exciting to have the opportunity to uh, go out at night and then see the, the sky all lit up in the pictures, of course, uh, post-launch. Um, in my first flight, when we launched at night, we actually went into a cloud deck after about uh, 20 seconds, and so all the folks who had come to see the launch actually didn't get to see very much because uh, we had disappeared behind the clouds. But from what I'm told in the pictures I've seen, this one was uh, really spectacular and they were able to see the, the shuttle all the way through uh, almost to the point that we shut off the main engines. And so that had to be really exciting for the folks who had the opportunity to come down and see one of the shuttle launches before the shuttle program uh, ends here uh, and this year or next year. And 
Bob, we understand you had some uh, unscheduled excitement with the power harness on your spacesuit. Talk about what happened and how you were working around it. Well, it turns out that uh, the spacesuit that we brought up with us uh, wasn't able to get power from the battery pack that uh, rides underneath the, the backpack that you see on the spacesuit up to the TV system that uh, allows the ground and the folks inside the space shuttle to actually see what's going on, basically be additional eyes looking over my shoulder uh, while we're out on the spacewalks. And so what we had to do, uh, George Zamka and uh, Suichi Noguchi, another crew member who's probably not uh, on the video right now, but who's also living up here on the Internet, National Space Station as part of the station crew swapped out to another uh, suit for me. So I'm basically going out with a, a different suit that uh, doesn't have that power harness in it. So it shouldn't give us any more trouble. Good news there. And this is for shuttle pilot Terry Verts. Terry, originally from Maryland in your home state right now, is under blizzard conditions. I'm just curious, what does a blizzard look like from space? Hi, uh, I have heard about that. In fact, several of my friends were not able to make it to the launch because they got several feet of snow. And uh, just a, a little while ago, I was down in the Russian segment talking with the cosmonauts here, and we looked out as we flew over Russia, and uh, it was very white. Um, one of my first views of the Earth, just a few minutes after we got into space and the main engines cut off, um, I looked out and I could see the Alps going underneath and they were snow covered. And it, it's beautiful. The Earth looks different than what I had imagined. Um, it looks, it's more spectacular probably than you can even put into words. And uh, I think there's more color to it, more tones, and it, it just looks um, amazing. That's great. And in addition to being a resupply mission, this is also the delivery of Tranquility Node. Talk about what is involved in installing that node on the ISS and what it's going to do when it's there. The, uh, actually, we have two nodes, two modules we brought up, Tranquility, which is Node 3, and then we also have the Cupola. So the first task tomorrow, Bob and Nick will be going outside to do a spacewalk and they're going to unplug the node from the space shuttle. And then Kay Hire and myself, we're going to move the, uh, the two nodes with the big robotic arm. We're going to move it and attach it to the left side or the port side of the space station. And then over the coming days, we're going to open the hatches and go inside. And uh, Steve Robinson and George Zamka and among others are going to go inside and connect the wires and harnesses and uh, get it outfitted from the inside. And Bob and Nick will have two additional EVAs to do after we get it set up uh, to get the modules in their final configuration on the outside. And this is for Shuttle Commander George Zamka. George, you've been here before, and here you are at ISS again. Talk about the shuttle's legacy as its missions come to a close later on this year and the, the legacy in, as concerns uh, its relationship with the International Space Station. Sure. I, I think to start with, you have to remember when the shuttle began, it was a, a pretty aggressive idea to take a space vehicle that would take off uh, like a rocket and then transform itself into a spaceship complete with a robotic arm and an airlock in space, be able to deliver a, a lot of uh, cargo up and uh, then land like an airplane. And it's been doing that uh, for a long time, and it's been doing it with grit and with people that are very talented and, and very uh, focused on uh, the space mission for the United States. So to see it go, it's it's going to be a sad thing, but I think what we're going to see is a uh, a system to replace the uh, capabilities that the shuttle has. We'll just we're just going to end up doing it a little bit differently, but uh, we're all very fortunate to have uh, ridden aboard the shuttle. It's been a tremendous vehicle. Thank you. And one last for mission specialist Steve Robinson. A lot of people follow the space program, to be sure. You've also got followers of your rock band, Max Q. And for folks who want to know when and where your next gig is going to be, how soon are you going to be back to Earth playing guitar? Oh, I don't have to wait till I get back to Earth. There's a guitar, right? About 50 feet from me down there in the uh, node, and my poor crewmates here are going to get tortured here one of these days. <laughs> so uh, thanks for asking, and uh, welcome aboard the International Space Station. Endeavor, thank you so much for all of your time, and Godspeed. Endeavor ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thanks.